Okay, so, um, right, so uh, I'm, I'm here to have a, a sort of chat, a uh, chill out chat with my mate Kian. Um, so, Kian, tomorrow is International Friendship Day. Is it? I've heard, there we go. So, nice. um, I thought that was a good time, and, and I've uh, got a superhero mug. Nice, I've actually got your, your honor. present you got me. Oh, brilliant, well done. The news oh, it's work. It's, oh, I can't open it, confidential, but it's got all my work notes in it. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's good. So uh, have you uh, been sort of using it for personal development stuff that we were chatting about before? Or? So the, the life coaching stuff we've been doing, I started using it for that. Um, but then also it's also got work in there as well. Um, so basically the way I, I differentiate is works in a purple pen and then personal stuff's in a blue pen. So I can show you the personal stuff. That's wow, the, that's very, that's very organised. Got my lists and stuff in it in, per, uh, in blue pen. But anything cool. purple means it's confidential. Don't let people see your personal stuff, but... That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah. My life is an open book. <laughs> Here you go, guys. <laughs> Here's what's wrong with me. <laughs> so, well, that leads us on nicely to um, what we're going to chat about then. Um, so, yeah, I think July is all about um self-esteem confidence uh self-acceptance uh identity etc and vulnerability and um yeah i think it's probably a good good thing to have a chat with you about all this kind of stuff because uh, we've had quite a few chats over these yeah. topics um and uh, and the nice thing is is that we we've been able to sort of just sort of share stuff like that and we that without you know it hasn't been awkward sort of just um, when we've been going through yeah. a tough time and stuff so um let's I don't, I don't know if i want to sort of go too psychological on you um, yeah. but tell tell me tell us a bit about like your, your self-esteem issues that you might have had in the past yeah and... that's cool um so it's, it's quite a funny one actually because if, if people met me um and people that know me don't think it's something i struggle with um, and I think that's very much because, and I think most people that, that struggle with self-esteem and self-confidence and stuff put on such a barrier, such a face that they tend to come across quite loud, quite confident. Um, but on the inside, I, I have many, many doubts about myself. And even to the point, I doubt what other people think about me. Um, it's happened for a long time. Um, it's something, I think it's just my personality trait. It's just something to do with me. Um, happened at school. Um, I got diagnosed with diabetes at the age of 10. Um, and I put on weight quite drastically. Um, and that, that was kind of my first knock to self-esteem, self-confidence. The first time I really was aware of myself being younger. I don't think you are. You quite enjoy just running about playing and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so going into secondary school and then being one of the, the larger kids in, in the year, um, was, was a bit of a struggle because back at that time, I think everyone does it. Kids don't really think about what they say and, and how people can take that in. Um, so I used to get um, mentioned, my weight used to get mentioned quite a lot, even to the point going into the, the rugby club for, for the school. Um, straight away, it's kind of look at the size of me. Oh, he can play prop. He's a big lad. Um, I might not have been interested in prop. It's just my physique kind of fitted to it. Um, so kind of myself, it seems to take a knock from from a young age um, and it's just something i've always struggled with i'm very much i want everyone to like me and i don't do confrontation and stuff and if there's ever a reason someone doesn't like me i'll worry about it i always think whenever i meet someone new um oh what do they think of me uh, am i have i upset them am i being too loud am i being this but it's quite funny because what's happened is the older i've got i've ended up when i go to social events i end up kind of isolating myself um and I feel more comfort in, I will find either someone I know, um, mm -hmm. say for example, we went to a big party and you were there, I'd kind of like tag on and be like, oh no, Damien, I'll be with him because I worry about what people think of me. And sometimes it, it leads to me struggling to integrate socially. Um, yeah, and- um, It's just quite, it's quite, just thinking that's quite interesting because you and I have had a, a, a similar path in that because, uh, um, I, I mean, I, I had bullying at school as well. and. Um, and, and equally, I joined the rugby club um, kind of like as almost as a reaction to that as well. Um, um, if I'm honest, mine wasn't, I didn't want to join the rugby club. I was more into football back then anyway. Yeah, yeah. 
but I was never good enough to get into the football team. There were some really high end quality players at, at the school. So it's kind of like, like I say, look at his physique, he, he could play there. Yeah, I was I was similar in that I, I always had a good sporting ability, but I was always, I, I never had the opportunity at school. I was always kind of a bit kind of put on these sidelines. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I just wonder if there's something about us sort of a bit later in life, revisiting that and trying to correct some wrongs. Yeah, quite. In, in, quite in, a, in a sense, kind of. A <laughs> um, it's quite so possible. I, sport so it's uh, yeah I kind of at the moment as an adult I try and do as many sports as I can to the point I'm I'm a bit obsessive in that if I I get a little little taste of something then I'm I'm into it massively so yeah. my mate invited me golf I started playing golf and then I went and bought my own clubs my own gear my own own all, all my stuff so I could start going more so recently about 10, 11 weeks ago, me and my wife obviously got into running. So I've gone and brought running shorts, running socks. I get, when I get the taste of something, I then very much get into it. So I'm like an avid motorsport fan, rugby fan, football fan. And I do throw myself into 110% um, when I get into something. I'm not necessarily great at them. Um, can, we, um, can we just break for a second for people to see yeah, your, can we, can we see your, your superhero um, cupboard with your bobbleheads? Uh, we we can if, if you want. Yeah, on, I want to see. We 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 need to show people your obsessive side. <laughs> to my obsessive side. So actually, if I'm totally honest with you, so as some of you obviously don't know me, I'm I'm mad about Marvel. Really like Marvel, but none of these I've actually brought myself. Um, these have all been gifts <laughs> to me. Um, but they they're cool. I like them. They look like they're going to attack you at night. Um, but they're <laughs> in the dining room, so I think I'm all right. That. I don't think they can do stairs, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is quite cool. Just don't um, get wet after midnight, yeah? That's, that's, yeah, that's a great example <laughs> of my obsessive nature. When I get into something, I really get into it. Um, I just, yeah. yeah. Into well, it. Why do you think, do you think, um, because I think we share that in as well, really, because I've got um, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, would you say you have a bit of OCD as well? Yeah, when it when it gets to things like that, so and I go through. I don't know about yourself, but I go through fads, um, and I'm very. People have mentioned to me. I, I pick something up when I get into it. So, for example, with my mug at the moment, um, a few weeks ago, I really suddenly got back into Toy Story and really liked Toy Story. Um, and then saying, um, for example, this weekend, British touring cars is back on the telly, so I start watching that, and then suddenly I'll be obsessive about British touring cars. Um, so I'm a bit like it with that, um, that yeah, once, once I get a taste of something, I get into it to the point that then if you ask me what I like, I'm like, oh, I love this, I love this, I love this. I've got my main things like Marvel, Rugby, Formula One, top it. But then whenever I'm introduced to something, I really like try and throw myself into it hundred percent. And then, yeah. But do you think there's, is there like a perfectionism there? Um, a little bit. Um, a good example of kind of how I like things to be perfect is one day one of them them bobbleheads that I've just shown turned up and its head wasn't quite straight to its body. So I ended up taking it apart and bending the spring and sorting it all out so that the head was how it should be. Um, yeah. which is so let's, um, so let's move away from like things and stuff because like I wonder if like you and I do we do we share that in, in our minds as well in that everything's got to be really um, neat and tidy in our head. Um, it's, it depends who you ask. So I'd say yes, but it's with certain things. Because if you ask my wife, she she thinks I'm quite messy. Yeah. Um. In the, in terms of like, for example, she'll she's really good at she'll sit there and go, oh Joe, what this afternoon I want to do the hoovering and she'll do it. I'm more obsessive about other things such as like I like you. I know it's going back to, it, but I'm more obsessive about things and having them neat and pristine. Um, also, it sounds a bit weird, with, with my self-confidence and self-esteem, it's also with myself. I don't class myself as an attractive person, I don't ever think that about myself, but I will never go out the house without having my hair done. I don't like letting people see me with my hair down, or um, I get really obsessive about if my skin flares up due to my diabetes and high sugar levels, I can get quite poor skin. I get really obsessive about that and I'm like, oh, I look really bad and, and things like that. So in terms of 
neatness so why, myself I am. Um, not so much with tidiness and neatness. I can be quite a bit of a a klutz in that I'm not, in terms of like if I had documents and stuff, I'm not obsessively neat with them. Mm. Uh, on terms of myself, I'm a bit obsessed. Why, um, why do you think you de developed that then about sort of self-esteem? Um... It's, it's a hard one. Like I say, it kind of links to... To secondary school, like I say, get, being the size that I was and getting teased a bit about my size and things. And then also, um, I had a close group of friends. My friends were really nice, but I was kind of out of the group of friends. I was probably the last one to get a girlfriend. Um, and then straight away, it puts doubts in your mind. So as a kid, I was straight away like, well, I'm not attractive. Girls don't like me. Um, my mates have got girlfriends and things like that. Um, so I think it kind of developed from secondary school. So I say, as a kid in primary school, I don't remember really obsessing about things that much whereas it's been kind of secondary schools when I started to worry about what people thought of me and uh, if people liked me and how I come across and things like that um, it's yeah that's when it kind of come across uh, as it um just out of interest has since getting married has that has it subsided at all in that you um mate you can get you can get ugly now it's okay it's no so this is the thing. it's really odd it's it's and I hope there's people out there that can kind of relate to this. And I hope me speaking honestly will help them realise that, oh, actually, yeah, I'm kind of like that. I'm still obsessive in the fact I, I won't leave the house without doing my hair or, or I, I like to have nice clothes. So I, my, my, my wife, back, I'm quite bad for buying new clothes. As soon as a bit of clothing has got a thread out of it or a hole, it's gone. Socks, anything like that, they're straight away gone. And I like to have nice looking clothes. But being married and meeting, meeting my wife, um, has helped me out a lot because she has really absorbed my geekiness and, and me as a person. So she for herself, she got into Marvel and tried to find out about it. She took me to my first ever Formula One race. She really cared about me. It's helped me in that, not in a horrible way. I still worry about what friends and people think of me, but in terms of the fact of wanting to be attractive to others, like other women and stuff, I don't have that now because I've, because I've got my wife, I am married. That's really, eased up so much obviously compared to secondary school um in terms of friends and stuff i still want people to like me i still want to come across as a nice person and that's one thing that's really bad because i do get anxiety and social anxiety and things about going out i can come across quite grumpy when really mm. everyone that i meet i really like i want to get along with but because i'm so introverted and scared at times i come across quite grumpy but going back to a question in a roundabout way being married has helped in the fact i don't worry about what I look like to, to other women, I'm not looking for a mate or a partner as such, um, but I still won't go out the house without having my hair done or, or things like that. I don't like leaving if I haven't shaved because I can't grow a beard properly and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So just, uh, I mean, it's interesting about what happens to us when we're younger though, doesn't it? And, the, and almost like the kind of the, the demon voices in your head that you get mm. from that. Um, I mean, I know that I've, had, I've had to sort of work through a lot of those kind of inner voices of, um, you know, you're not good enough, you're yeah. um, just things, things that always kind of make you feel less than you are. Um, mm. So do you have those same kind of struggles, like your, your, like an inner voice almost that kind of... Yeah, 100%. Um, and even to, even to this day, I still, still have it where I have doubts of myself um, and I don't think I'm good enough. And even things with such as like work and things like that, I struggle. I think, oh, do I think I'm not doing a good enough job? Um, if, if I say with friends and stuff, I worry, oh, do they not like me? Do I need to be doing more to kind of interact with them? But the, the, on the flip side, again, I don't know if it's something similar with yourself, is mm. I'm really bad at taking compliments. So I have a really great network of friends around me and um, my wife and things, and they're giving me compliments and stuff because I'm so them thoughts in my head, I won't take them on. Um, so someone will say like, oh, you look nice today. And I get really like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like hearing that about myself because I don't believe it. Um, yeah. it can, for friends and people, it's probably really frustrating. It's a, a great example of kind of the things in my head where I worry I'm not good enough and things is I joined the local rugby club. Um, they've been, so I got into rugby a few years ago. Um, so I, I wanted to play. So mm -hmm. I'd go on a train with them and everyone was so welcoming. I dropped the ball and they'd be like, don't worry pick it up next time, not a problem, so nice, I welcome him. But I'd get like a, I'd have like a mini panic attack before every training session or anything because I'd worry I'm annoying them by keep dropping the ball or 
they don't think I'm good enough. But they weren't thinking that. The coaches, the players were so nice and welcoming. <clears throat> it's me. And, and I, I understand for other people outside looking in, it must be frustrating because they're saying yeah. they a problem, but in my head I'm like, I've dropped the ball again, they're going to get annoyed. And they're not even thinking it. It's, it's me. Yeah. It's inside my own head. The first, um, the first match I played, um, I didn't know the rules properly. Um, and um, I didn't re realise you had to let go of the ball. Yeah. <laughs> And so I, I kind of, um, I, I went to the ground as in like, I think I got tackled by a couple of guys, but I refused to let go of the ball. And there was like literally this mountain of, of people on top of me. <laughs> and they're all like going, where's the ball? Where's the ball? And I was like, hiding it. <laughs> it's kind of always like... mine, my precious. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's, um, I mean, what, um, have you tried to work on that, that kind of thing about compliments though, about, have you tried to accept um, a compliment rather than... I, I try to, and I try and say the right things, but I think if, if, you're, if you can read body language quite well, I think it's quite obvious that I feel uncomfortable. Um, so I, I, someone will say something, I'll go, uh, uh, thanks, and I kind of lose myself. Or it's quite often, if it happens, I will try and then remove myself. Um, yeah. I say if it works, someone says something, oh, I like your, your jeans or your outfit, so I'll be like, oh, thanks. I need a toilet and then I, I will just excuse myself and, to get away from the situation. It's, it's, mm. it's, it's like I say, it's, it must be frustrating for other people that they're, they're trying, they try and support and be nice and stuff, but it's just, it's just who I am. So I just don't do yeah. well. I get quite embarrassed by it. Um, it's the best way to describe it is embarrassed. And it's, it's, it, it comes down to is that I don't believe it myself. Um, yeah. Which is, I just wonder if by, by, if, by sort of doing that, though, you're kind of limiting your own um, self-worth, though, aren't you? Um, I wonder if there are some things you can do to kind of, like, just stop yourself from, like, putting that wall up at that time. Yeah, it's... Um, just sort of say, you know, I'll just say thank you, even. Yeah, which I, I, that's what I've started to do, is try and say thank you. But like I say, I, I say it in such an awkward manner. I think the person must think what's he doing because i go uh, thanks and stumble. <laughs> I'm, I'm better with it at home like if if my wife um says something i'm i i, I can take it because i feel comfortable to step back to her and things like that but if it's at work or in front of a group of people i'm a bit like oh um and just find it very embarrassing it's very so much it links to it's a kind of linking in links to birthdays and stuff like that i don't like the attention being on me um so with birthdays and stuff, I try and not celebrate them. I keep them quiet because it's the, the fear of eyes on, if you get what mm -hmm. I mean. The fear of you're the centre of attention. So it's the same when compliments and stuff happen. I worry, say we're in a group setting, or that yeah, person. Yeah. So then other people are now going to look and it's the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the worry of that. I could never be a, 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 a singer or anything like or a, a professional sportsman because the idea of being in front of thousands of people watching you, um, yeah. it's a fear. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. It's it's easier like doing this, isn't it, a one-to-one -one chat than than uh, <coughs> facing a crowd of people. Because mm. I think you, I don't know about you. Maybe maybe it's something to do with being sensitive as well. Maybe like we're quite sensitive. Um, um, I hundred percent agree. Um, people very much with me say I, I am very sensitive. People will make a joke and I take it to heart, and they might not mean it in a horrible way. Um, yeah, yeah. Straight away, safe. And for example, if I've ever made a joke. And I then sometimes think that like, oh, have I, have I upset that person making that joke? So I end up trying to follow it up with a, with a text or, I'm really sorry, I was only joking when I said that earlier. Or, and some people yeah. are like, it's a joke, you don't need to worry. <laughs> and it's happened before that like, oh, I made I did a joke that. via text. And I then did. I'm worried that they're not replying. And I'm like, oh, I must chase them up to see if they're all right. And yeah, yeah. I did that this week. I kind of, um, I kind of said something quite assertive to a few people. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually kind of agreed with what I said, although well, it was a bit harsh. But yeah. then afterwards, immediately afterwards, you're like backtracking, aren't you? And like apologising for it. And you're like, and then, and then after that, you hate yourself because you apologise because you think, actually, I shouldn't have apologised. I should have like just stood my ground. Um, yeah. And it's this constant like second guessing of your, your judgment. Yeah. The link into <laughs> confrontation um, anywhere in any setting because it's the fear of upsetting someone. and and someone not liking you and it's as you mentioned it's because we're sensitive but i think also on the flip side looking at it positively it's because we're caring 
we don't want to upset people. We don't want people to be upset or have done anything to, to ruin that person's day. Mm. So at a restaurant or anything, someone could give me a stone cold meal. And I don't have it in myself to complain or send it back. So I'm like, oh, I know it's, it, it's, they're used to it, it's done, but I just think, oh, I don't want to upset anyone. And um, people could do stuff to upset me, as you mentioned, and I'll be like, oh, just deal with it. They probably didn't mean to do it and I won't confront it because I don't ever want to upset that person or ultimately I don't ever want to fall out with that person. I don't want to lose a friendship or a relationship over something so menial or, or, or silly. Yeah. But sometimes as well, when I then talk to my wife about it, she's like, I don't think it was meant that way. But where I'm sensitive, I do... I take things very differently to how sometimes people might mean them. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 um, it's like a curse and a blessing being sensitive, isn't it? It's, yeah. uh, you, you're able to be very empathetic with other people. Mm. But at the same time, then you start taking all their crap on you because you are empathetic. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's, it's a tough, it's a tough balance. Um, and, um, and I think like you were saying about like when you're talking to a group of people, you're so sensitive um, that you can almost like hear a pin drop, can't you? So you're kind yeah. of like that person, like four rows back, just kind of yawned while yeah. I was talking. Like, I must be really boring. And so, and so instead of looking at like the 80 faces that look really interested, you look at the one that kind of like yawned at you. Yeah, hundred percent. And then that leads into <laughs> as well that um, sometimes, like I say, with the being sensitive and the overthinking, something could happen in a room of, like say, forty, eighty people, and you think, oh, that's that's about me, and it won't be. Um, yeah, yeah. For example, you could you could be doing something, or I don't know, someone could laugh, and you think they're laughing at me, and they they won't be. Um, it's something completely irrelevant because you're sensitive and because you're hearing it because you I think you're more tuned into listening to that you think oh they're laughing at me and then you've done nothing to be laughed at or they wouldn't be yeah. doing it or you're whispering you think are they whispering about me and then you get a bit obsessive about thinking about i wonder what they were saying if i upset them have i done this linking to what i was kind of saying earlier yeah yeah it's kind of like a superpower that we need to control kian <laughs> yeah that's what it is 100 <laughs> percent. it's like having super sensitive hearing and like not being affected by loud noises yeah um so just should we just finish with like vulnerability then so do you find being vulnerable to people easy or um no it takes a lot for me to be able to open up and talk honestly with someone and show my vulnerabilities <coughs> which is kind of linked into what i say earlier so if i'm with a group of people um they might not so even some of my friends now that i may have known 10 plus years won't know the the struggles i have with self-esteem and, and things like that and open up for uh, i like this so i won't open up and make myself vulnerable um so i say i can meet new people and they think he's he's grumpy he's quite quiet or i'll, I'll be on my phone because it's a comfort to me um and it's silly stuff i don't know if you ever does i will go out sometimes and i'll go to a, a a group setting where i'm meeting up with people um like for a party or a birthday or whatever and i won't take my coat off and it can be 26 degrees but it's it's a comfort thing it's i've got that that comfort on me and it's that's the fear of opening up and being vulnerable and yeah it, it's really upsetting sometimes i think it can be perceived as always oh, being grumpy um he doesn't want to engage he's not making an effort but it's that it's that scared of opening up and it's it's really well it's hard to, it's hard to relax sometimes in people's company yeah. isn't it um, yeah and i don't think it should be down to other people i really sometimes i really make an effort with myself and it depends on what it depends on what day I'm having. Sometimes I can be really high and I'm like, I'm going to go talk to that person. I've got the confidence today. And then another day I'll go, actually, I don't want to meet anyone new. Um, yeah. But it's, I, I feel that I, I try and make an effort to do it, but sometimes I can't bring myself to just go and say hello to that new person. And I'll wait for them to do it. But as soon as they've done it, it mm. there's like a click and it's like, oh, they've, they've instigated with me, so they want to chat. Whereas sometimes I don't want to go to that person because I think they don't want to be spoken to or, or things like this. And like I say, it makes me come across grumpy when... People that know me, so like my wife, <coughs> health, things like that, know I'm, I'm really not grumpy and I find pleasures in the simplest of things because I worry about this stuff and I don't open up as a, as a vulnerable person or open up my feelings. I, I can come across quite shut down and, and, and a bit negative at times. Yeah, yeah. And um, no, I agree. I, I think uh, it, 
it can be quite hard to sort of just let your armor down sometimes i think can't it mm. with with people um but it's also a bit like a safe place isn't it but um and I, I agree with you as well i think sometimes you you kind of overcompensate i mean people that i i can kind of fluctuate i can if i'm in a good place i can be like the life of the party and be quite joyful yeah. and, and happy uh, and that is kind of me but then you but then like insecurities start to sort of creep in don't they and kind of like uh it's kind of like this this constant battle between yeah good, good and evil then kind of like uh can i can i keep my joyfulness going kind of kind of thing and uh it's it's exactly that it's it, two days can be completely different there's there's some days i'm like oh i want to be around people and i'll book into loads of stuff with people and then i'm like oh tomorrow i want to see this person i want to do that i want to do that i want to do that and sometimes i can wake up and it can be a bad day and i'm like i don't want to see anyone I just want to sit in a corner in my house and just <clears throat> do work or read a comic or just do TV. I don't want to be around people. Um, and like you say, it's the, it's the good and bad. Some, some days I can wake up and like I say, I can go to a party or a group setting and be like, I'm going to go around and make an effort to talk to everyone. And people go like, oh, who's this guy? And then the yeah. next time I go, I'm really secluded. And they're like, well, why, why, what's he doing? Like, he's, he's not how he was. And it's, it's really hard, like I say, because I won't open up to people. It's really hard to explain that, that, They've done nothing wrong. It's something to do with them. It's just sometimes I'm a bit not as confident. I'm a bit more introverted and don't want <laughs> to. You're, you're going to find this really. This is this is kind of funny, right? Sometimes if, if I'm in a situation like that, I'll kind of like. Um, I I consider myself to be quite brave, um, mm. because and and probably you you hopefully consider yourself the same, in the because you have to overcome these fears on a daily basis yeah and uh, so if i'm in a situation i think what uh, you and i sort of share we've we both work with teenagers and yeah. uh, if you show any kind of fear with teenagers it's like blood to a shark isn't it so so you you have to kind of be brave and, and not show fear um yeah uh, and 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 actually they don't know what to do with that um but i've got i think both of us both of us uh like this guy yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah i i kind of think i i kind of pretend i'm captain america in situations sometimes i think i don't know about you but it's like kind of like i'm 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 gonna like uh over overcome this fear and i'm gonna like i'm gonna have this conversation with this intimidating person even yeah. if it kills me <laughs> there's, there's times where like you say you kind of pluck up the courage you get that bravery and you do it and afterwards it feels great I sometimes I think, why was I so worried about that? Or why did I worry what how that was going to go and things like that? But yeah. sometimes doubt can just kind of force its way in and take over a bit and it stops you going to do that. Yeah, um, definitely. And it is it's very much a mental mental battle, isn't it? Um, yeah. All the time, really. Mm. I think. That, um, yeah. yeah. And it's hard, it's hard to explain to people. If some people, I think more people probably suffer with that kind of kind of thoughts than let on because like i say the oh, way yeah, i deal with it and i think other people deal with it is that sometimes when we're in that situation the way to put up a mask like you, exactly like you're saying is to not yeah. show that fear is to not show that so yeah. you come across quite loud and and really you, you can well you can overcompensate sometimes can't you and then you end up being like really arrogant yeah uh, you're think, not. i don't want to don't want to see that person again like they they think much of themselves <laughs> And I've had, I've had people actually say in my past, um, people I worked with actually at the time, I found out and said like, oh, he thinks a lot of himself. He's very like, up himself and very vain. And they didn't know that inside I'm going, I don't like the way I look. If I could change my face, I would. If I could get a six pack and a better figure, I would. And they don't know yeah. I'm these demons inside. But to them, they're like, he's, he's up himself. And I found out that that was said about work colleagues had said that. And that destroyed me. And I was like, I wish I could open up and say, guys, actually i've heard this and to let you know i actually have really bad self-esteem and i don't yeah. think that of myself but because i put on that like you say because you put on that overcompensating it's sometimes how you come across it's the same as like i say earlier and i know i keep saying it is some people think you come across grumpy or uninvolved un or excited or interested when that's not the case at all it's just trying to work in your head like i want to be confident and talk to these people but i mm. struggle and like I say, some days it's to the point I've arranged to do something, so I don't want to let this group of people down or anyone down. I've woke up on a day where I'm like, oh, I could 
do with just a self day rather than yeah. It can be quite, I don't know about you. It can be quite knackering. Like you've plucked up all this courage, and it actually takes up quite a bit of energy. And then, Mate, I said something the other day. It could take. It, sometimes I feel like I have to expend five times more energy when I'm with people than hmm. than when I'm yeah on my own. And then you can uh, get home, and you just kind of it's oh that's done, and it's kind of you don't know, sit there. And I think I haven't even got the energy to make myself a cup of tea or anything because I've really yeah, had yeah. To fight and to put myself in that situation. I, I'd say I'm getting better with age. Hmm. Um, I'm still, I'm still not perfect. I still have them doubts. I still worry about people liking me and things. Um, but like, like you mentioned earlier, being married and having a good set of friends around me really helps. Mm. And people I know I can talk to. But like I say, there's, there's some people I talk to about it, some people I've known years and probably still wouldn't know that I, I suffer with self-esteem and things like that. And it just, it's swings and roundabouts. It depends on what day they see me and how I am that day, really. Yeah, which is why it's good to have friends to understand, I think. 100%, yeah. Yeah, and you could just be yourself with. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and like you say, I think a lot of people struggle with it. And uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I think there's you know, this kind of concept of people being normal. I don't think there really is like a normal person. No, uh, no, it's, no it's one not. can be strong all the time. It's, it's like, uh, it's impossible. Um, yeah, it's that. It's, it's a bit cliche what I'm about to say now, but it's the there is no normal. And I think some people, when they don't understand how people take things, it's quite hard to know what to say in that. Mm. But like you say, because we're quite sensitive, we can take things quite hard and it can beat you up. I remember I worked somewhere once and there was conversation between some of the, the, the group about what their ideal man was, etc. things like this. And I had one of the, the ladies turn around and said, you're not a man, Kian. You're quite immature because you read comics. And I think that's oh. immature. I quite like reading. I've always been into Marvel. It's, it's did, just... did you go home and burn your comics? No, I've still got all of them. And I went home and I was like, I'm going to buy more figures. because. Of you. <laughs> um, but I know where they're coming from. They, some people perceive it they're like, oh, it's childish to collect figures and things like this for comics. But it's just yeah. a Like I say, I get obsessive and I get into things. But that comment tore me apart for about a week, um, thinking, oh, um, I was at the time I was like 26 I think I was and I was like oh they think I'm not a man because I like comics and then you worry about it and I know the person probably didn't mean it maliciously I don't think they were a malicious person but just probably didn't think because they don't know because I hadn't opened up how yeah. a comment like that could be received um, just, yeah yeah, yeah and, and people need to be caref careful what they say I think um, and like I say just because we, we just, people can put on a brave face doesn't mean that um, they can still have a soft underbelly. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. get hurt quite easily. Um, mm. Well, thank you. No worries. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being vulnerable, and uh, 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 that that was a good chat. Um, and uh, it's good to know that we've all got issues. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> my goal would be that hopefully someone going through something synthesis can watch what me and you have spoke about. We've both opened up and would be like, Do you know what? I'm in the same boat. And I think something that's really it's quite cliche again in strong society. I think it's men really struggle to open up and talk like this. I, I'll be honest, I found it easy today because it's just yourself on a screen. And I think it works great for me that I won't see who's watching this and people can go and watch it and hopefully we'll get something from it. Um, but I think, it, I think men need to open up more. I think society's changed where we're not necessarily expected to be macho and, and how things were or cavemen like I will fight and deliver. Like, we can be vulnerable. It's not a bad thing. Well, we're allowed to sort of at least uh, have emotions. Yeah, hundred percent. Which is good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, emotional intelligence—that's another thing. We probably need to chat another day. Yeah. Um, but thank you for your time today. No worries. Thank you. And uh, go and read some comics. I uh, say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of them comics. <laughs> All right, mate. I'll see you later. Yes, sir, mate. Take care. Bye-bye.